Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> welcome to another episode of the What Did He Said podcast, Red Pill Tamales edition. What episode is this of Red Pill Tamales? Cinco. Numero cinco, hashtag RPT. Today we have my lovely co-host. Marisol. Marisol Herrera. And we have producer Rob. What up, everybody? Reunited. You know what's crazy, but right. I went to go get my, uh, this is so random, I know. Uh, my my pants hemmed, mm -hmm. and I started to write my name, and I wrote Martinez, and I was like, "Oh wait, that's not my last name anymore." I like it, I, I like scratched it out and put Herrera. I still like. You forgot you got wifed up. <laughs> I was like, "Oh shit, I forgot that's not my last name anymore." So the feedback has been great. People seem to be enjoying Red Pill Tamales. We don't know if it's gonna. I mean, like I said on the last episode, I'm kind of burnt out on politics because. You know, people still believe the news and they f refuse to keep an open mind. And well, you know what might be a good approach, babe? Mm -hmm. Might be a good approach. Yeah. Might. Um, is if maybe we do research on what this uh, Democratic Party that's coming in, what they're planning to do, and just to see if there's any good in the things that they're going to try to implement so that we're not being controversial here. Now you're trying to see the okay. good and what they might implement <clears throat> the and then show how it is not good. Well, off the top of my head, obviously we've heard a lot about taxes, right? That, that could be a complicated math addition. Uh, we've also heard a lot about them taking away certain guns or doing some kind of gun control type mm -hmm. of thing. I don't know how that's going to fly in Texas. Um, it's not. What other stuff? Um, Texas, they've tried plenty of times here with that, yeah. like other people that have run and it just, the minute someone comes in Texas and says, I'm going to take, take your guns, they, they've lost them. Isn't it crazy? Yeah, they for lost sure. Them. Like Bethel. Yeah. yeah. That's how Bethel uh, lost But by the yeah. way, so this is the, we're recording this on Thanksgiving Eve oh. for everybody so that they know, mm -hmm. you know, tomorrow's Thanksgiving. Friday, I'll, I'll put it on Friday so that people are, that might be going out there doing Black Friday shopping, which is still a thing. Like, mm -hmm. despite all the lockdowns, mm -hmm. I've seen so many articles that are like, oh, if you think Black Friday is going anywhere, you are wrong. So this will be out there. You can listen to the podcast while you're doing your shopping. Speaking sure. of that, it's funny. My uh, sister's in town. She's moved to Boston for work. Right. And we were at the mall and she, we were walking through the makeup aisle in Macy's and she goes, mm -hmm. it's so weird to see everything completely open here because back in Boston, everything is not open. So basically, you know, like all the makeup counters that are inside, like, you know, big department Macy's stores, basically they're all, she said like saran wrapped. So you can't touch them. You can't be around them. And they're kind of like blocked off by like, you know, like little not caution tape, literally, but like that red yeah. uh, rope that they kind of put around. Because <clears throat> she says not everything. Sh uh, restaurants are definitely not open. Um, Speaking of all this stuff, like how it varies from state to state with uh, governors. Like, um, I think it's... Uh, so, this one thing I heard, y'all can fact check me. I heard that the way the media was covering, I believe, Illinois. Supposedly, Illinois has like a ton of cases, but yet they were very locked down and they were very strict on the mass compliance and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But they still had a ton of cases. And I forget uh, it, whoever was writing about it. They pretty much did a side by side comparison showing how the media shows like, uh, let's just say a Republican state that maybe had some cases and was just open for the, you know, for the sake of the economy and people's jobs and stuff. And just showing like the hypocrisy of like, like, bro, I believe it's Illinois. It's like, bro, Illinois got has all these cases, all these problems, but you're just sweeping that under the rug to like maybe help out the party or the governor or or just to make it seem like, hey, guys, you know, all this all these rules that we're doing, like the curfews and the lockdowns and the mass and the this and the that. It's really working. Yeah. Yeah. And that actually leads me into the article I sent Chingo. I should have sent it to you. If I, I didn't know you were going to be here until mm -hmm. I walked in. But. There was an article that came out yesterday saying that had the media not lied and been so biased for uh, Biden and against Trump, Trump would have, and this is hypothetical, obviously, would have won 311 electoral votes. And mm -hmm. um, this, the company that did the survey was uh, oh. a media research center. Mm -hmm. And there was just kind of some of the, the key things that like people that are listening to this podcast and you guys know, like Biden's sex assault allegations. Oh, right? yeah, I know about it. 35 percent of people were unaware. So they, they polled 1700 people that would uh, that are after the election that would have basically not voted for Biden had they known these things. And yeah. So it was basically a list. Um, it, it, it's cool because it comes in meme format mm -hmm. right there. It's a list from the study from the 1700 people. And it had all the a handful of bad things like did you know about the Hunter Biden scandal? Right. And did key you? swing states of, of all places, too. <clears throat> yeah. So. You know, apparently there was there was something to be learned and something that could be they have, there was a hypothesis behind it. It was like a list of bad stuff for Biden. And then 
a good stuff that Trump did that people didn't know. So right. it, was, it was like a, a energy independence, Middle East peace treaties. Mm-hmm. What else was on there? The economic growth. Yeah, the percentage of job growth. 11 million jobs created. Uh, uh, operational warp speed. Operation warp speed. So a whole bunch of positive stuff that these folks that they interviewed for this poll, um, they were like, I didn't know yeah. any of the bad stuff you're showing me about Biden. I had no idea because they watch CNN all day. Mm-hmm. And they believe that chingo why do you go to independent journalists like yeah. chingo let me find out you're queuing on chingo let me find out you're getting all your facts from me and this is what happens rasa when when little vatos like chingo bling go to youtube university and think they know everything and they don't know that biden's for la raza that's the type of shit i get right on twitter but the mainstream media has proven they lose in credibility by the day in my opinion uh last episode we we talked about how cnn is probably going to have to turn on mm-hmm. on Biden, uh, Mighty Soldiers made a good point, which is, hey, why don't we pick apart some of the stuff that yeah. that they may be doing? Because, you know, for four years it was just hide everything positive that Trump is doing, focus on whatever little stupid tweet or he says something dumb, and we gonna take it out of context. It was never like productive. It, it was never like let's go ask some tough questions. Let's go out there and investigate this. Let's let's go see what's going on with this money laundering Biden thing. What's up with this? Uh, hard dr- Hunter Biden hard drive scandal. No, it was just wait till he tweets something. Like these little cartoonists and stuff, political cartoonists, <laughs> same thing. There's somebody that left a comment, babe, on this last post that you put, um, which was about the people that Biden are grouping together to get their uh, whole... The build the cages yeah. people? Yeah. And someone said their father was a victim of the whole o- Obama immigration thing. Mm-hmm. And he said after like thousands and thousands of dollars, his dad was finally... Obviously, now he's still here. Um, and then he put hashtag, they can't deport us all. Mm-hmm. But it'd be kind of cool if, to reach out to him, Rob, and just mm-hmm. kind of maybe have him call in, even if it's through Zoom. I don't even know if that's possible for us to do. But just to kind of ask him, like, he's he seemed like he was on the uh, Trump supporter, not the Biden supporter, mm-hmm. um, because obviously I think he understands what was going on with the whole Obama thing. And like I read all those things that that, you know, what I want to do, to be honest with you for the next time is really uh, go in depth about how Obama really set these cages up and the reason behind it. And I hate when people say like that Trump separated the families I'm not sure if people knew this, but they were already separated. Like these kids were already separated from the parents. Yeah, they weren't. A lot of them weren't with their parents. Yeah. So, so that's a very good point. That so I know someone listening is like, oh, that's just semantics. You're just, oh, now it's just word salad. Now you're just picking apart words. But no, you're absolutely right. If the media was a little bit more, uh, what's the word like thorough? Yeah, thorough. Like, oh, if the media was more like hey, we need to make a headline so that people know the facts and know what's going on. It would be like, um, you know, Trump has all these cages that were from the previous administration. They tried to do this caravan stuff. Some of these kids were unaccompanied. Unfortunately, it's a fucked up situation, but it's about to get worse because now they're still using these cages. It, obviously, that's too long for a headline. Yeah. But my, here's my point. The word separated that's a very persuasive word, and that was done on purpose. There, there's so many other synonyms and other words that a, an, an editor or a journalist, you know, but you don't get clicks like that. Mm-hmm. Right. You got. This is one thing people got to make, have to keep in mind at all times. Uh, and I'll give you some examples right now, Remezcla. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there's money in, like, these little websites, like a Remezcla.com. There you got a free shout out. Um, you know, they make their little blog posts and they have their little WordPress or Squarespace. I don't know what they use. And they, they get little pictures off the internet cause they just put me on there and they didn't reach out to my people for pictures. And I'm glad they used a decent picture, Yeah. but that's what they do. They, they got a Photoshop person. They type the little headline, they copy paste some shit. They, and then boom ads, there's ads all around it. They're going to show engagement. They're going to show clicks and it has to say something like, Chingo Bling spreads misinformation, blah, 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 Trump supporter, little pump, whatever, whatever. You know what I'm saying? But there's profit in clicks. So they're going to use words like separated yeah, and shit like that. Yeah, I just think it's a little bit like um, everybody keeps saying, get over it. Trump lost. No one's even mad Take about it. Take your L. Yeah. No one's mad about it. I guess what people don't understand, it's 
to me, it, it was more about the things that were actually being accomplished while this man was in office versus do I like and enjoy this man? We all know he's cocky. You know what I'm saying? We all yeah. know he's got a big head. We all know that. Like, it's not like... He's a we, fucking narcissist. Yeah, we all know that. Uh, yeah. But it's crazy, so though. Man. <laughs> he is... Um, he tweets guys, weird stuff. Yeah, so it's like, for oh, me... Weird to, stuff, Jingo? <laughs> yeah. To me, with him, it's like, okay, let's put that aside. And when people say he's he's like a, a child molester, who are you talking about? Biden? Bi no, no, no. They're saying that Trump has yeah, done they, little, like he's messed around with okay. little young girls, and they, they'll find some clip where he said some shit about his daughter, like I date her or something like that, something really oh, weird. Right, right, right. Or they'll find a picture of like his kid on his lap or something, yeah. and try to just make it a thing. Meanwhile, there's like a fucking 38 minute compilation of Biden sniffing hair. <laughs> on a youtube that's fucking nuts it's it's crazy like with it's it's a battle i just had this conversation with our creative director yesterday and what i was talking about is like it's insane how we've allowed as americans okay for the media to separate us the way they have to really make us blue against red democrats against republicans the media has done an amazing job and us americans have failed as to each other in that way for sure so um, we've allowed for the media to brainwash us and tell us uh, what we're supposed to think and who we're supposed to vote versus uh, us doing our own work and our own research and making sure that what we read is not just something that was just put on there, but actually researched, et cetera. Not just because you read something, the first article that pops up oh, on Google is example, not going to be the, yeah, it's just you know? Any slap yeah. dick and put that up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because yeah, you might see a headline like Chingo Bling denounces his rasa and you might believe it because you're an idiot if you believe that. <laughs> you know, somebody was like, it's a shame and it makes you wonder Maybe he's been racist as fuck all along. And it's like, now I got to come out and defend myself. Okay, hey, everyone, I'm Mexican. I'm not racist. I live in a black neighborhood, blah, blah, blah. No, you're a fucking idiot. Um, but who makes us more Mexican than the other Mexican? No, pinche, <laughs> pinche gente estupida. So listen, so a minute ago, you mentioned the word brainwash. I know a lot of people might think, I'm not brainwashable. No one's got me brainwashed. Media brainwashing Americans. Take your L, Marisol. Take your L and stop trying to make excuses for trompas. Now, brainwashing is real. For the, sure. the CIA and the FBI, I mean, all these other countries, the KGB, all it, it's a real thing. Mm -hmm. um, let's just call it persuasion for now. Persuasion is all around us. You see a billboard, they're trying to persuade you to exit 57 and go get a, a brisket sandwich or something. You know what I mean? Persuasion is all around us. So if the news prioritizes what stories they think you should be focused on, that already is a lot of power. Because there's only so much time in the news cycle that they're not going to tell you everything. They're not going to tell you how many people died of diabetes. They're just like, nah, bitch, we focus on COVID right now. And that's the only number. Of or next week, we might not be focused on COVID. We might be focused on cities burning. That's inconvenient. They might shift the focus. No, we're going to focus on... Uh, Trump says something stupid, something about bleach. Boom. We're about to focus on that. And that becomes the water cooler talk. Mm -hmm. That becomes top of mind. Uh, it, it eats up so much airtime, headlines. You know, elections come around. Boom. You're not hearing about COVID as much. You know, once it's Biden won, president elect, you know, CNN removes the banner. All these things are done specifically to persuade you. Little by little by little by little by little by little until they get you right where they want you, where you're locking down, you're in the house by 10 p.m., you're wearing a mask in your house while you eat, you count how many people in your house for Thanksgiving, and all this extreme shit. And people are going to say, listen to the science. Okay, well, if I pay off a bunch of scientists and I make a whole bunch of little websites and they put up some studies, which are going to be debunked in two weeks anyway, it doesn't matter because today I'm going to say you better listen to the science and do what I say. See, that's why you subscribe to the Red Pill Podcast. Red Tamale, Red Pill Tamale, <laughs> so Chingo can say stuff like that and people can enjoy it. But, you know, a funny thing about Thanksgiving, I don't know if you guys know this, the reason it was started was because it was actually a journal, it was a like a magazine editor or a newspaper editor at, at the time in like 1776, right after the, uh, the 13 colonies won and became you know different uh, separated from the British <clears throat> from the British. Mm -hmm. Her idea was let's have a day of thanks mm -hmm. so that Americans can be thankful 
and basically try to uh, push off what was the civil war that was coming to bring mm. America closer. Mm. And this would be the first time that we won't have like a traditional Thanksgiving mm. around the, the country since 1778 or wh whenever Abraham Lincoln wow. said, this is going to be like Thanksgiving. And now so, we're, and we're further apart. And there is talks of a civil war. And, and you know what else? You yeah. know what else upsets me about us Latinos is that just because someone votes a different way, you're considered a sellout. Right. But if if Latinos from both parties sat down together and figured out the issues for Latinos, right, mm -hmm. figured out our issues, which is diabetes, because that's part of an issue that we have here. Right. Obesity, which is also another issue that we have. Uh, immigration, right? Education, mm -hmm. uh, DACA. E economics. Economics, right? Teaching you that there's no such thing as, oh, that's white shit. You know, that's what white people do. It's there. It, we did that to white people. We've gave, we've given white people that much credit. So you can't even be, be mad at the white person because you gave that white person that much fucking like, like associating positive things. With, yeah. With white you given them that much hierarchy. Look you know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if we came together literally as Latinos, not as Republicans, not as Democrats, but if we really came together as Latinos and worked together to fix these issues, the fucking politicians would be so pissed because they'd be like, wait oh, a minute, wait a minute. No, 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 no. Oh, that's going to be, if we like really sat down and worked together and we put all bullshit aside, no president, no Democrat, no Republican. Let's really talk about the issues happening in the Latino community. We come up with a plan on how to resolve this shit and we fucking resolve Systems. it. We're going to be yeah. the fucking like elite fucking race bro the elite fucking race whoa. Be don't like, be throwing that whoa, around whoa, you're gonna whoa, trigger whoa, some people brown like, supremacy so. no. whoa whoa we have a we brown would. we would be we would be on top because as it is i'm not saying no other race aren't other races aren't hustlers at all that's not what i'm saying but you know immigrants come here and the first thing they're trying to do is who what the fuck? How the fuck I'm gonna make some money? They're gonna take that clip of money soul and make it into a, a brown. So they're gonna yeah. chop parts <laughs> out, and you're gonna. Well, that's be on... okay because I'm proud to be Latina. So and if she they... and she got this merch out. So all these little cheese men, uh, fake ass wannabe shade room, fake ass Latino cheese men websites. Y'all want some clout? Chop up the clip. Put this picture up right and, here, and make sure this is the thumbnail because you know my baby got a clothing line, her hey. apparel. Echale ganas. And I'm all about pushing positive positivity because if you approach things in a positive manner, then guess what? Positive shit comes out. So everybody who's being negative, talking about, you know, just take fuck your L, fuck out. you, chingo, sell out, you fuck your wife, you know, she's fucking ugly with no makeup, etc. All those little things, if you would take that much energy, right? and put it into your own community and try to see how you can solve issues versus just criticizing others, guess what? We would be fucking on top, bro. That's it, it, and that's all hey, there is. But y'all, y'all too busy fighting over which old white man we need to be riding with. Yeah. Um, I'm very proud of myself today because I stirred up the pot a little bit because I have an album coming out. Uh, it's out Friday. This this episode this, is yep. up. Versace Mariachi, Chingobling.com. We got the merch and the, and the albums. So you know, I had to stir up the pot a little bit. I posted this um, thing on my Instagram. Follow me, where it says, in the final debate. Biden said that Obama was the one who built the cages, not him. Well, Biden just named Cecilia Munoz, Obama's immigration advisor, who defended separating children from their families and then caging and deporting them to his transition team. So he put her on his transition team. Remember that Obama deported more immigrants in his first term than Trump did, and Biden was right by his side for eight years. Those who voted Democrat because Trump was mean to immigrants just got played again. That was from a dude named Spike Cohen, I don't know who the hell he is, but uh, I found it interesting that this Cecilia Munoz lady and this whole Obama Biden. Last episode, I read off the numbers of like 600,000, 500,000, mm -hmm. 400,000, 600,000. And then the numbers dropped during Trump. So I put a uh, y'all want to talk about it or not? Hashtag Chingo warned y'all. In other words, you know, you calling me a sellout. But somebody in my comment said the real sellout is Jorge Ramos. Who ain't who didn't he basically gave Obama a pass, basically. When all this shit was going on, mm -hmm. they been had people in cages and they gave him a pass because Jorge Ramos' daughter was working under Hillary Clinton. So he was on that team in a way. Mm -hmm. I guess. I don't know. I mean that makes sense. Allegedly, yeah. I'm not I don't give a fuck if he's a sellout or not. But people on here saying, you know, props, bro, because you're actually doing the job that the media ain't. Like you're you're showing people something that Univision and Telemundo won't. 
Yeah, that it's evident in the comments too, because people are literally saying things like, "This is waking me up. I'm seeing things in a new way." And it's not like we're out there trying to be, you know, everybody's parent, everybody's teacher. Yeah. But this, this is a part of the the outlet, right? You're talking about it, and people are gonna learn stuff. My thing is this: I'm not trying to be like, everybody come to the Republican side, because shit, this is the first time ever in my life I even voted that way, and. Um, Really what it is, it's like, hey, moving forward, ask more questions, look for context, you know, make sure you have diverse um, news sources and how to research shit and and don't let the algorithm just throw you in an echo chamber and you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And and it's just a wiser strategy, John Leguizamo, it's a wiser strategy to say, hey, hold on, kind of like an ice cube. Well, which party is doing what? And we're going to do a side-by-side -side comparison. And I'm not just going to take what CNN tells me um, – off face value i'm taking all that shit with a big ass grain of kosher salt and um and really just to approach the game with more leverage like marisol said i'm ready to vote for marisol the way she just made that speech um run for a I, local I know office. a lot of girls in traffic right now fuck yeah yes queen yes queen you, yes. yes like man she's like she, she's i'm like, speaking she's I'm a, speaking yeah i'm speaking she's a chicana aoc homie oh no not chicana i know i'm just kidding <laughs> hey she's a mexican aoc fool you know what's what's and I'll ask you guys this. You should ask yourself, is X, Y, or Z important to me enough to where I should go find out more about it, right? And before it even goes down to cultural, right? Latinos, blacks, whatever, is freedom of speech important to you? What wh why is that unique to the United States? Do a lot of people know that? A lot of the things that we have as far as freedoms are very unique to America. That's why people are trying to come through the border. That's like, that's why life and limb. They're trying to they they're willing to lose life and limb. They're willing to they're willing they're willing to risk their children during this crossing the border to where they can die, they can drown, they can be sex trafficked, they can be a lot of things. So if a parent as it is is putting a child through that much risk, does that tell you anything about our country? And yeah. compare some let's just say Mexico, compare the way their health system works and if we're about to move a step further in that direction mm -hmm. because a lot of the people that are escaping where they're from to come here, a lot of times if they're up on game, they're very concerned where things might be headed. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You would think people would think, why are they leaving those countries to come here? Well, probably because it's better here, right? Yeah, but we're, we're just so um, spoiled and uh, everything. What's the word? It's like cushiony. like they Comfortable? Put, yeah, they put nerf around the edges. Like yeah. mm -hmm. every, Everybody gets a particip participation thing, and we're on, we're on autopilot. And we just believe the CNN, and and it's very simplified to like orange man bad, biting good. I'm I'm gonna I'm going to work. That's that's as deep, you know. I heard he said some shit about bleach and Mexicans, and that's it. I was one of those people. Where I'm like fuck that dude, talking about uh, we all rapists and shit. And then later, like we did on the last episode, where we played it and we broke it down, like, oh, it sounds like he was just. Oh great, y'all played it last week. Did we yeah. play it on the podcast? I thought we did. I think we played it. Before we started recording, then we just talked about it. Oh, okay, maybe oh, we shit. just well, maybe we just talked about it. Yeah. If you want to play it, you can. But the what I was saying about the clip of Trump saying some of them are good people, I assume, yeah. you know, but they're bringing many problems. My takeaway was it's kind of hard to clean it up to like for a Mexican to be like, oh, okay, fool, my bad, dog. okay, I forgive him. Yeah. yeah, that might not happen. Sure, because you know, even though he said some are good. Pinche raza se ofende. Yeah. Ya, ya valió, wey. And he says it in a brash way, too. It's kind of unapologetic. Yeah, he kind of fucked up. I mean, yeah. that wasn't... That's what I'm saying. He's not the best yeah, at yeah, speaking. Yeah. You yeah. know, I mean, we all know that. Yeah. He's. But we're looking at, you know, actual policies. And sign and, language and, and, you know what I'm saying? When someone's like <laughs> cocky and big headed, you know, you go... So it's like, you know, he's just a fucking... He's just big headed. My thing behind him is, is he's, he's doing shit. Like, he's actually he actually did shit. And, you know... He didn't take the entire four years to, you know what I'm saying, accomplish what he said he was going to, like, you know what I'm saying? He didn't like, if he, he said he was going to so do shit. something, <clears throat> exactly. He said he was going to do something that was get done versus a lot of times when any president Career comes in, I'm not talking about Biden. I'm just talking about any president that comes in. They say they're going to do this shit and then we all vote for them. And then they come in out and you're like, well, didn't you say you were going to do X, Y, Z? What happened with that? You know what I'm saying? That's, that's my reasoning why I didn't vote for Obama the second time. You know what I'm saying? Because I felt like that second time. Like if hope and change didn't come the first time. Yeah, around. I was like, wait, man, you were yeah. supposed to be the first person where I'm not saying we're the same, but we're he's a minority. I felt like I'm a minority. Like I felt like I feel like 
maybe he's going to view the world different to where it's going to make a change yeah. for well, people forget that black lives matter started during under obama because it was that much racial injustice oh, going because, on um, oh i didn't know that yeah. well yeah. so Word. people forget you're absolutely right uh freddie gray mm -hmm. i believe was during obama Mike Brown, yeah. I believe, was during Obama. Obama uh, uh, Trayvon Martin, Trayvon Martin yeah. which wasn't a police officer, but it wasn't police brutality. But still, it was during Obama. And that's when BLM came about. And obviously, now... Oh, I remember for Trayvon. Yeah. Yes. So, okay, sorry. Mm -hmm. obviously, now, people are starting to really pick apart the BLM thing. Basically mm -hmm. saying, like, it sounds good. You're using it to play with people's emotions and to help get Biden in office and where's all this money going like have y'all built a park have y'all done some school lunches like what it, have y'all put any kids through college are y'all what are y'all what are y'all doing with all this money let's go into the Democratic Party it went to the Democratic Party so when I get these little um like uh it'll be like a, a Mexican dude talking shit right and then you click on her thing right next to his little his he el He'll have hashtag BLM and probably like a BLM donate link and this, that, and the third. And it's already like, bro, obviously nobody wants to see people dying at the hands of police, regardless of color. You know what I'm saying? Um, obviously, we saw how everything was framed. Later, we hear more about data and like, oh, a lot of white people die f at the hands of police, but they never put that on the news. Or, you know, is it all Black Lives Matter? You know what I mean? If yeah. it's if it's a a black cop dying at the hands of a looter trying to defend a business, do we make him a hashtag too? Or that doesn't fit your narrative, CNN. You yeah. don't want to talk about all black lives. Yeah. If a, if we're not talking about black abortions, we're not talking about black on black crime. You, you're not really allowed to bring that up because it it comes across as insensitive. Like, hey, bro, we're talking about this issue, not all this other. We're not talking about South Side, South Side Chicago, right? Yeah. Now. You know, we're talking about this. And, but it just makes you wonder, man. And um, like I say, man, everything's nuanced. It's not just so black and white. Orange man bad, biting good. You know, like what Mighty Soul was saying. We need to, like within our community, I feel that they literally, with that Mexican rapist shit and kids in cages, Yahweh, con esas dos cosas, with DACA, yeah. kids in cages, uh, not even without before even getting to the drink bleach, and I, I heard he called Nazis fine people. Just with the kids in cages, DACA, and the uh, and called us rapists. That's why I'm getting all the heat that I'm getting. I totally understand. People think this man is Hitler. They think that I am now a Nazi. But he did better with the Latin vote and the black vote this I year. Know. Yeah, him. because we like law and order. Yeah, yeah and some of us saw the bullshit like okay they're burning down these cities. I see what's going on with okay, these. Okay, let's talk about what I sent you. The DM I sent you about the um. <sighs> the uh, sec, uh, sexual assault. Uh, I have to pull it up. We sent each other some on. interesting shit. Uh, sexual assault. Into, where? Uh, I the forget border. where. No, 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 no. I just, I Who just sent you something. Assault? I don't have my phone. I gave it to Joseph. <laughs> Oh, the they defunded the, the yes, LAPD, they defunded, right? Yes. Right, right. They defunded the, the oh, sex the, crimes yeah, unit. Yeah, the sex crimes unit got defunded in the process of everybody using the death of George Floyd, right. using the death of Breonna Taylor to their overall shadow agenda. So right. I, this is basically my argument, is that a lot of times the powers that be that really want to um, socially engineer stuff, they're going to come up with a catchy slogan and they're going to go out and find whatever proof they need. Meaning like, oh, someone just like sh call just came in. Somebody got shot by a cop. These people that I'm referring to, they're like, please say it was a black person. Please say it was a black man. Please say it was a black man. They're like, and if they say it was a black man, please say he was unarmed. Please say he was unarmed. He was unarmed. Okay. Please tell me somebody got cell phone footage. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then, and then they're going to run their game. They call Don Lemon. They get the slogan, BLM's activated. I don't know if George Soros <laughs> got something to do with it. He I don't know at, at what point Antifa <laughs> comes into play. I don't know at what point Antifa starts to burn shit down. But the news people are going to make money. People are going to be glued to the TV. We're more and more angry. We're more and more divided. We get sucked into the news silos. And now we're, we're more likely to vote emotionally. So somebody benefits from when minorities die at the hand of police. Mm. And what else, what else happens? Not only do all these little clickbait motherfuckers get paid. <clears throat> I'm not shouting them out again. Nope. But, um, but they'll, they'll sit around and convince you to vote a certain way. Now they defunded your police, including the sex crimes unit. 
And I haven't read the what whole the article. What the fuck you going to call? Some shit goes down worker. in your fucking neighborhood. Who the fuck are you going to call? I haven't read the whole thing. Did y'all read that? Because it no, might I haven't be read the whole thing. There might be some context or some nuance because they're probably there's a liberal yelling right now like Jingo stop spreading Well, I got it from a conservative account sure. so like i said uh it's funny you were talking about uh can i, I turn it around yeah i've i i hella uh i know i hella confused uh instagram with the algorithms because he's like <laughs> wait she follows democrats and republicans i don't know which way this girl so do we, we so what do we sell her because you know you got to watch both sides to understand what's going on like why are they saying this and why is this side saying this and then you you got to kind of make your own judgment and then you got to do your own research and then you got to figure out where it's coming from so that's why it's important that's why i said the uh, you know the last episode i was on it's like it's time for us as latinos um to do your own research and find what's in your best interest of you and your family and what are your concerns for the future especially if you have children what kind of world do you want them to live in once you die? Mm-hmm. Do you want them to live in fucking garbage where, you know what I'm saying? Like they're going to be struggling for food. They're going to be considered just like dirt, like shit because they're Latino. You know what I'm saying? What are, what are we, are they going to be voting the same yeah, way? Yeah. What are we going to do? All those things are important. Like I said, you know, I didn't care before probably like some of the things we talked about is I was, you know, you're single, you're not married. Uh, you know, you're like, you know, YOLO, Hennessy. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You're, you're like, you're in the club. I, I got to go vote. Cause that's just my duty, you know, yeah. to go do. My and, uh, duty. it looks like, uh, this guy's pretty good. Cause the news says it is. So I'm just going to go vote for him. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And that's, that's basically what I did. So when you said we have to listen to both sides of the news, well, guess what? The left is like 90% of the mainstream fucking zeitgeist. Mm-hmm. So, if you're on the right, you already know the argument on the left. Yeah. You already know they're like racist, 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 misogynist. But Islamophobe. you know what, babe? Mm-hmm. It's racist. Latinos are racist within their within our own community. And he yeah, brought that hey, up last hey, episode. Call call a Guatemalan a, uh, something. Else. You know what I mean? Call a Mexican. A, a, call we're a Cu- like that within our own. Okay. Call, call a Cuban. Example. Call you're, a Cuban. You're Salvadorian. no longer Mexican, boo. You're not oh, Mexican yeah, the, anymore. Oh yeah. Me, me cambiaron okay. con chaya, boo, but pues. check this out. Check this out. This, <laughs> is, what's, this is what's funny to <laughs> me. Okay. Ho ass motherfuckers. The I'm gonna remember that, that shit. The people that consider themselves like the most Mexican, they're hey, down. Fool, you're One, canceled. Don't speak Spanish. Two. Two, two que they no probably muerde. named their kids white names, right? Because <laughs> it's it's probably the truth, hey, right? But, I, but I'm the sellout. Uh, three, you don't realize that in Mexico, they don't see you as a Mexican. Uh, you know what I'm saying? They call you pocho. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And don't go over there. And, and, and this is one thing that my mom said to me. She goes, um, and usually anybody that's from here that goes on the other side, right, goes to Mexico, they're talking English over there. And that's the one thing that Mexicans can't stand is when you go over there, you're over there talking English. Like you don't know Spanish. Wait, bitch, I thought you was Mexican. Yeah. You're not Mexican now, right? And I'm not saying that you have to know Spanish to be Latino. You but don't. You, but you but must to, know but, Spanish to call me a sellout. To talk yeah, shit, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So don't go calling somebody a sellout. All because you know I'm trying I'm saying? to help. All because, Cuando you know, you see no things a certain way. But, you know, a Mexican doesn't really, you know, the first thing Luisa asked me when I first hired her it was, you know what I'm saying? She asked me why I knew Spanish. I said, what do you mean? Well, yeah, why do you speak Spanish so well? It's like, because this is my first language. She's like, I know, but everybody that comes here, okay? That's her every, perception of people? That's her perception is every t- somebody that's born here. They forget. They forget Spanish. That's it. They, they'll they learn it maybe when they're children. And this is her. She goes, no, hombre, ya dicen, dicen, basically like how they talk about us yeah. over here, about us over here is like, Oh, you learn it, you speak it, but then all of a sudden you forget it. You know what I'm saying? Like, ah, no, que muy mexicano. And, I, and I'm like, word? That's what they think? I know in Mexico City it's big time like that. I didn't know like in Monterrey because I've never been there, obviously. I mean, well, I have, but never like really like socialized and hung out. It was really in and out because Chingo had some shows there. But wow. what I'm getting at is like, you know, it, it, it really starts within our own community. The same way we criticize, the same way the black community is criticized because they've got black crime on you know what i'm saying crime on, on themselves mm-hmm. within their own community we have our own issues too and if we worked on our own issues guess what the politicians would be so fucking scared because they'd be like <clears throat> well fuck how can we well, how, hey how are Who's we going to st- convince them wait, to wait, come wait. over here they're going to be so they're going to be scared and they're going to say this 
Where did this trend come from? Exactly. Why are all of a sudden they're asking us more questions? Yes. Why are they not just buying our bullshit yep. and then running off? Because Shingo Bling opened our minds? Yeah. I don't know if I'm going to be one of the ones, the main one, the only one. But please join me because right now you still got Eva Longoria and them on that side. Yeah, tag some more people that are actually doing this in the comments. Who else is actually talking about this like the way Chingo and myself are? And then maybe we could uh, and, collaborate. And out of those folks that y'all tag, how many of them had something going already? And they're not just coming out the blue exactly. saying, Who's hey. risking it? Yeah, they're not just coming out the gate saying, hey, everybody, I voted for Trump. Not, hey, everybody, uh, I want to let y'all know something. This is Chingo Bling, mister. They can't deport us all. But I've been peeping some shit. I know some of y'all going to think I'm crazy. Some of y'all going to think I'm racist or I've lost it. But I think it's a wiser strategy that we start to kind of diversify our yeah. options. And John Logazamo telling us to just vote one way, talking about uh, Latinos for Trump, or, which I don't call myself that, but Latinos for Trump are like roaches for raid. And it's like, all right, Mr. Logazamo, you're super talented. You're very funny. I love your work. But that's not a very productive thing to put out there. Anyway, I want to shout out this person right here in the, in the what did he said comments at Cashflow Express. It was on the video where I'm talking shit about Latino Hollywood. Okay. I, I, was, I was feeling myself that day, y'all. Dude, all head. the clips are fire. You know what I'm talking about? And he says, preach that prosperity shit, chingo. And uh, what did he say? Game to like. And then I came in with the back dough. I was like, man, thank you. That's all I want for us. That's all I ever wanted for us. And that's where all this is coming from. It's just that motherfuckers rather just be lazy and say, nah, I heard the dude say something about we rapists and uh, you sided with the enemy and you were, you were Hitler now. But people are, this is the thing, I don't get it. If you're so mad about it, why don't you just take a little bit, a little bit of what Chingo is saying, right? Or what you're saying, what I'm saying, just take a little bit and say, let me see what I can find on my own. And really don't just let, don't just read, like I said, the first article that pops up on Google, really go <laughs> on there and look. First of all, don't use Google, use DuckDuckGo.com. Yeah. Yeah. And um, uh, one thing that, that was crazy was, um, so I'm reading the Candace Owens book, right? And um, if you don't know who Candace Owens is, a lot of people hate her, she's a, she's a very conservative, uh, you know, African-American woman. Um, she's very smart though. Uh, she is hated a lot by the- By T.I. <laughs> by, yeah, but she's very by smart, and uh, she had an incident that happened to her, which made her realize that she's been victimized this whole time. You know, like she's been taught to be victimized. And um, one thing which made her kind of, she kind of started after that, it made her start kind of being curious. So she Googled, right, conservative um, African-Americans on on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of where she came Rabbit across. Hole. For she real. Went, well, I went on off. there and I said, let me let me search conservative Mexicans. Not a whole lot. I didn't find any. Now, I found a lot of conservative Cubans. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a lot of conservative. Uh, there were conservative Latinos, but they didn't say like who ran it. Yeah. And they only had like 17 hey, subscribers. I, I dare you to type in Latino celebrities for Biden. <laughs> <laughs> But my thing was because she kind of went down that rabbit hole to see what information she would get so that she can start doing her research. Right. So I kind of wanted to do the same. Like, you know, what I'm saying like I, I need to be educated. You know what I'm saying? I need to understand it. I want to understand it. How does immigration really work? Let's talk about that. Because they not just the, what's on the, the news. The Democrats make it sound not sweet. just what they put out there. Let's figure it out. I would love to just go speak to somebody at the Border Patrol and just legit say i want you to explain to me how immigration works an immigration lawyer would be great meaning you um, okay what you mean what is the pro like what happens what really happens how do they 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 keep claiming these kids end up in you know what i'm saying in these cages because they got deported and separated from their kids let's really talk about how this happened how did they end up there well yeah i think some people again th this part might be speculation the folks, this might be a little bit of QAnon type shit, right? Which I don't really fuck with. Some people theorize that it goes as far as we're going to try to humiliate Trump. We know they got them cages already because that's from the previous administration. And they kind of incentivized and encouraged and gathered people to do a caravan, like to basically bum rush the show, for lack of better words, where they're going to ball up like a fist and strengthen numbers and bust through the wall and you can't deport us all, basically, right? <laughs> 
and um and in essence that shit didn't really pan out a lot of central americans got stuck in limbo they were like in reynosa matamoros by hermoso they were all in tamaulipas and all in la frontera and um folks started feeling bad for them because they couldn't work so they're basically like begging and um they hook it they would hook them up with beans and stuff and somebody complained like no ya nos cansamos de frijoles and it went on the news so mexicans were pissed they were like oh okay motherfucker you being ungrateful okay Eesh. fuck you then and I have a joke about it where the the Uber driver is basically saying these are our neighbors from the south. They bring their problems. We need to build a wall, make Honduras pay for it. The and funny thing is that it damn near, it pretty hilarious. much happened. But I know yeah. Mexico is going to pay for the wall. Are they? In a way, in there's a, a way, thing. Yeah, there's a thing Basic, that just came out that is it. It was basically like remember what Trump said. Yeah. Yeah. He he got it. It's going to happen. Yeah. Well, well, that makes sense. Let but no, but they're working together. It yeah. has nothing to do with. Yeah, Trump. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing me, to do with that. Let no, me explain course. it. Let me explain it. Because it's a technicality. They're not going to cut a check for the wall. Basically, it's a it's a thing where if you're a Mexican citizen on the Mexico side and you're tampering and damaging the wall in an attempt to, to come through, Mexico was going to fine you. That fine money is coming to us, to the U.S. Sorry, I know. My, what do you mean, us, <laughs> bitch? You, rasa. you see what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. So, in essence... It, it might be a drop in the fucking bucket, but I think the point Marisol is making is, like, motherfucker had a plan, and I can't remember the last time a politician said, I'm going to do this, 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 and this, and pretty much damn near out the gate. He fixed so... Trump fixed so much shit. I know y'all don't want to hear this, lefties. Uh, all the leftists watching, they're probably like, look they're at mad this. As fuck but they're right still now. tuning this, in every, every they're gonna, episode. They're going to be like, look at this sellout motherfucker. But let me... I don't give a fuck. I'm going to just tell you. Do Versace your research. Ma- Versace Mariachi's out Friday. But let me tell Until you this. Hold, hold on. It's out Friday. So check it out. <laughs> he solved too much shit too fast to where we got spoiled and we weren't used to it. So we forgot about ISIS being a threat. ISIS used to be a threat threat. Al-Qaeda used to be a threat threat. Motherfucking Trump dead it all. Like, shh, he dead it all. Korea. Like, um, North Korea. All he had to do was kind of like, hey, hey, partner, what's up, man? You good? Hey, hey, man, why don't you point them weapons somewhere else? And people were like, oh, what does CNN do? Instead of saying this is the first time that Kim Jong-un, the dictator of North Korea, has finally been chill with us. No, they don't say that. Instead, they play us like we're dumb. And they said he's, uh, he's coddling dictators. He's being too nice to dictators. Bitch, let him do what the fuck he's trying to do. Bitch, shut the fuck up. He's trying to help us. He's doing this for us. He's trying to like play it cool. Hey man, what's good, partner? What's up, man? We we could do this, we could do this shit the cool way. How can we work together, maybe? You know, you good, you know what I mean? What you wanna smoke? Just beef? Or we chilling? Oh, okay, man. But thanks for hollering at me. We chilling. That's okay. the start of a bit right there. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Yeah, right. <laughs> and now they now they chilling. And if you notice, when there were rumors about uh, Kim Jong-un might, might be dead, or he might be in a coma, there were all these rumors, right? Because North Korea, they got some good propaganda. So you never really know. Mm-hmm. Especially if you live in there, you really don't know nothing. Like, I forgot what it was, man. I think it was in North Korea. They didn't know people had landed on the moon. They don't know. They didn't know what f- other freedoms other people had. So it's like a pimp in a hole like it's better if you don't know for sure so so basically trump fixed too much shit too fast in terms of like um like we said um north korea al iran there was a dude named soleimani he ain't around no more Mm -hmm. he was he was basically the military head of iran and if if y'all know iran has had beef with a lot of motherfuckers, including us, and they had us by the nuts with this bullshit deal that Obama and them had us in, where we were basically giving them a billion dollars to not fuck us up. Mm-hmm. And Trump was like, fuck your billion. We ain't giving you shit. We not signing that. We doing something else. And this dude, Soleimani, he took him out. Shh, the dude with all the guns and the missiles. When he took him out, I think the Ayatollah, the, the head spiritual leader, or the, the other leader, the real leader, I guess, he was happy. I mean, they were happy. They were like, man, this motherfucker was wild. The general, yeah. Soleimani. Mm-hmm. Anyway, the point is, Trump fixed too much shit too fast, and people were too busy bitching about stupid shit he tweeted and dumb shit he might have said. We don't really know how he said it. They twisted the words up. And it's like usually when you're running up against a candidate, 
there there's gonna be like stuff they didn't fix yet or some shit that's fucked up but all they could do is this fucking covid <laughs> it's it's like hilariously frustrating honestly at yeah. this point because yeah. that's all you can do is kind of see what plays out what happens yeah. um like y- yesterday or today uh oan what is it one america news network mm-hmm. or something like that they got uh banned from twitter for a week mm, why just posting uh covid news and trump related type of consp- oh, they called it like conspiratorial news i think they the uh, twitter they've um blocked and what is it put fact check and block and hidden Two, oh, I forget, like 248 times of Trump. And 262. 262 times of Trump and the Trump team and the Trump family, right? Right. Blocking people, White House press secretary, suspend her, can't tweet that. Biden, how many times? Zero. You want to guess? <laughs> Zero. I can't even do it. Zero times. Zero times versus. And not once that have ever talked about the shit he's in right now. No. Oh, they not. They don't want to. Not talk about once it. have they talked about his. Fu- no one cares. The every time laundering. you mention it, every time you mention it, they're like, Conspiracy. just take the L. Just take the L. What? Vin Diesel. Blah blah no. blah. Vin Diesel. No. As Americans, <laughs> we deserve the right to know what the fuck is going on. Whether it, he. He w- even if he was he wouldn't have won. We still deserve the right to know what this fucking crooked ass politician is doing. Look, according to Media Research Center, seventeen percent of Biden voters would not have voted for him if they'd have been aware of the major news stories, the media censor. If they would have known, yeah, yeah just if, if they would have known. If they would have known, like a lot of people leave me to comment where they're like, "Damn, Chingo, this shit would have been useful about two, three weeks ago." Or yeah, some yeah, shit. yeah. I see a lot of that, and this isn't to say that they would have gone to Trump by any means. They could have gone to Joe Jorgensen or maybe not voted at all. Or shit, Kanye, Kanye, you know. <laughs> but at seventeen, I didn't see Kanye on my on my. Ballot. Only certain states he was able to make it the deadline. Ah, uh, yeah, because yeah. I didn't see it in Texas. So, you know, again, that's a fucking, that's a bummer. That's crazy conspiratorial type shit, but you can find the information if you look for it. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, and that's, and that's what, and that's really what this is about. That's why you guys decided to do this podcast, you know, for these 12 episodes. It's, it's not to sway anybody to vote in a certain way. It's not to sway anybody to become a certain kind of way. It's just opening up Uh, your eyes to shit that's happening out there that we as Americans because you are an American no matter if you're Mexican unless you were born in Mexico you are an American and if you're uh, uh, you know and if (laughs) you are Mexican American I thought you were American now bitch that you know what I'm saying if you are born here you are an American yeah. You know, I mean, it is what it well, is. You, you come from Mexican descent or Salvadorian descent or whatever it is. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what your parents are. But if you were born here, accept it or not, you are considered an American. You know, if you go in any other country, you're not coming in as a Mexican citizen. You're not coming in as a, you know what I'm saying, whatever country, you you know, your parents are from. You're coming in as a, an American citizen, you know? So my thing is, all politics aside, we deserve the right to be explained to what the fuck is happening. If fr- if voter fraud happened, we deserve the right to know. Regardless, if Biden wins, then he won. He fucking yeah. won. I'm, I don't care. But I want to know what the fuck happened with this damn Dominion program. Like what? Whoa, whoa, whoa! You're like what's why it? aren't we doing anything about it? You know? Hey, you ever be at, at high, uh, high at home and shit like, and you see Biden's low bitty rally? You're like. Phew. Man, that's a little bitty rally. <laughs> and then motherfucker won. It's like, okay, well, maybe, you know, Dude. maybe people weren't allowed to show up. And maybe they were playing that card of, we're trying to be safe, Chingo. Okay. okay. We need to they put little needed, circles. They needed to put those, uh, what are those things, babe? The foam things that you oh, used to people, have? like like fake stand-ins. Yeah. Like in the stands so at games So that there wasn't so much echo. Did you hear that? Oh, no. there, oh my God, there was so oh, much foam. echo. It was, it was oh. so, so they need some of that foam, that soundproof yeah, thing soundproof to make padding, it yeah. not sound so echoey. Dude. Because... On top it, it's, it's his stutter, Rob. He's not old. It's his stutter. <laughs> on top of what you just said, being that high and realizing that, and then on top of that saying, and Trump got 10 million more votes than he did in 2016, and another hit, yeah. and Biden got 10 million more than Obama did when he never came out of the basement. How the fuck does that math make any sense? And, President- and that's what I mean. As Americans, we deserve the right to know what the fuck happened. If I don't care if Biden wins, no. I need to know. I need well, to know what the fuck y'all were doing <laughs> well, over there. His, all right. First of so all, I hope they continue this fight oh, even they will. after. I hope they do. Y'all using the wrong the wrong names. Uh, y'all keep talking about President Biden. No, 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 <laughs> no, sweetheart. No, sweetheart. No, I'm not. Seeing, <laughs> it's said, President uh, Harris. Get your shit straight. Uh, it's President Trump, sir. He's still your president. <laughs> 
well in january whatever it's gonna be harris so <laughs> chingo tried to warn y'all but y'all like curfews and lockdowns and shit yeah california's going back down they're, they're closing outside dining if i'm not mistaken no they already did oh, they did they, again their dining was never you really open have thanksgiving outside dining <laughs> yeah. no oh, outside dining wait, is taken they're, away they're getting that, rid of outside yeah, yeah that, no outside. wednesday no. wednesday you can't eat outside it's done it's one day only no, I think they're getting rid of it. Either it's today or next Wednesday. For for a while until they flatten the curve yeah. again. Sure. But they've been on this little curfew thing, the, and and not at not at even at fifty percent so, or something oh like God. that, and they still can't curve that line. So, so what? So no, what's they, really happening? They probably did curve it. They're just doing playing a little game. But wait, so zero capacity for restaurants? Let's only no, only, only takeout, babe. <sighs> takeout. Man, California, man. Woo. Let's see what the LA Times said as of three days ago. Because as far as we knew, because we've seen people, you know, we still follow entertainers and we have friends out there. They post yeah, I know people. a gang yeah. of people. Yeah, you can go out there or whatever. But that's apparently from what I had read. Somebody said I can't go, but guess what? I'm going and I ain't checking in shit. Ain't that right, Mighty Soul? Who we checking in with when we land in LA? Who going to check me, boo? Who checking who in? Who checking what? The only thing I'm checking in is my luggage. So this is from Monday. The new rule takes effect 10 p.m. Wednesday, so I guess today, and restricts restaurants along with breweries, wineries, and bars mm -hmm. to takeout and delivery only for the first time since May. Hmm. You voted for this. You want to just yell at a microphone sometimes? Man, bro, I'm just going to pray. I'm just going to... And can they go to church? No. No. Are you joking? Marxists don't believe in church. No, <laughs> they, they want less God. They want the absence of God. There is no God in Marxism, yeah. Dude, which I'm, I'm not religious anyway. I don't want people to call me out later. Like, bitch, you said you're not religious. I'm not, but still. But check this out. There is another podcast. You know, I don't be I don't be shouting out other podcasts. They have boring ass voices, so you're probably not gonna like it. Mm. But, <laughs> but I'm gonna shout them out anyway. Good oh my caveat. God, he was playing it. Hold on and I now. Was like, I it's can't interesting. Read. I think it's called the Dictators. A real. It's called Real Dictators. There's several dictator podcasts, but um, it starts. Who, who are you just talking about right now? Oh, neo Marxist, uh -huh. dude! It starts explaining how I need to go back and shit because I was I was folding clothes. I ain't pay attention, but <laughs> yeah. it was like basically Marxism was like the the um, the school of thought that was needed to usher in more communism. It was a way. It was, basically Karl Marx wrote some shit that was like I'm gonna show y'all the steps on how we are gonna get this communism popping. And and it, it it starts off talking about um, like Kim Jong Un's grandfather when he was a little boy, and it's mm -hmm. just talking about, man, this shit is interesting because what I'm 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 and I'm gonna just say this, you know, because I'm rambling, but I'm fascinated with before a situation gets Venezuela bad, before um, a, a country gets to a certain type of um, North Korea type of situation, right? It's very extreme. Sure. What? what conditions what economic conditions are they maybe like in, in a depression like people are starving they hungry and they just want an answer and somebody sells them communism like look are you tired of all these social hierarchy classes like middle class we're just gonna have one class absence you know you know are you tired of having all these problems we need more government we need the government to come down such a dangerous game very such a dangerous very game. dangerous so let me give you two scenarios everybody <clears throat> pretend that you know we're trying to decide between a candidate who's going to run the greatest country to ever exist right should the answer be a american conservatism promoted by republicans and founded by biblical christian principles that have resulted in the greatest country to ever exist or b democratic socialism based on godless marxism that has resulted in catastrophic failure for over 100 million people being murdered by their governments in the 20th century alone with millions more living in poverty and misery wherever and wherever this has been tried venezuela being the current example okay the the latter that you just read which is the democratic socialism so socialism Karl marx blah 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 not only is there um maybe how about this read off the things at the end the bad shit uh, I'll just, so B, it was A or B, right? Democratic socialism based on godless Marxism that has resulted in a catastrophic failure of over 100 million people murdered by their governments mm -hmm. in the 20th century alone with millions more living in poverty, misery, wherever and whenever this has been tried, Venezuela being the current example. So here are some other things that happen, uh, to my knowledge. Famine uh, also can happen during that type of system. Genocide is sometimes a byproduct. Well, explain that to people. They might not understand so, know what that really means. So basically, uh, I'm new to all this 
Karl Marx, dictator, communism stuff. I know some people are probably listening saying, Chingo, you're spreading misinformation. We're never going to be a Venezuela. What has Biden done that's socialist? We're never going to be fucking communist. We're never well, going to. We have socialist uh, ideas, things, things yeah, so already they're implemented. Yeah, that's your firefighters, it. free cops. lunch. Yeah. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know those uh, programs that, you know, for first time home buyers. That, those are our tax dollars yeah. being used, in case you didn't know. Medicare, uh, Medicaid. Medicare, Medicaid. That we still have some sort of socialist ideas yeah. implemented yeah. But currently. It's not, but it's not full socialized medicine. Right. It's not all out socialism. Yeah, it's not government rule. Yeah, yeah. It's, not, it's not all out communism. Now, what I was mentioning earlier is, is that sometimes a byproduct of, of that type of world is you're going to have a dictator. That's a byproduct sometimes because... The situation is set up to where someone can take authoritative, totalitarian type of power. Mm. Famine tends to happen. Shit, Venezuela, I, I believe, is an example, right? Anytime you have someone having all this power and holding the people down the way it is in communism, you got people in bread lines. You know, you might be greedy. Excuse bless you. Me, sir. You might be greedy and you might mismanage how the agriculture happens in your country you know what i mean how does irrigation work there might be famine if if other countries put an embargo on you and you get cut off like cuba and you got cars sitting around from the 1950s that's the only thing you see um there might be famine mm -hmm. you know when you do have a dictator and you have famine you might have genocide meaning oh there's a certain group trying to rise up take me out of power who was it so we could do some propaganda and everybody's going to want to line them up and kill them all and that's it's happened before so i think the way they came up with that number of 100 million people dead at the hands of marxism and socialism and communism i think they factored in a little bit of genocide a little bit of famine a whole bunch of dictatorship and that's why i was trying to get into that podcast i'm trying to read up on the shit and i know someone's like chingo we're not there yet bro that biden didn't do anything that's remotely similar to any of that sure good point but I still want to be up on game because I'm 41. I don't plan on switching countries. The only country I'll probably ever switch to is maybe mainly like, okay, we're going to make Texas its own republic again. Yeah, right. You know, we got all the oil. We tired of propping up everybody. Uh, Chingo sounds really cocky on that part. Mighty soul. I just want you to tell him. <laughs> Tap him on the leg. Tell him to calm down. But, yeah, I just want to know so that, you know, I we have a two and a half year old. How old are you? Two and what? Two, two and, and some change. Yeah. Damn near three. How, how old is my She kid? wears 3T, but look here. She wears 4T. She <laughs> wears 4T. Neither here nor there. All right, look, them chocolate milks. You know, she got, <laughs> I, I'll be buying her them little 12-pack chocolate milks. It's there. I want to make sure that, you know, my 12-year-old, my 2-year-old, they kind of know a thing. That I, my parents didn't. I mean, my dad sometimes would mention, like, yeah, recently, shit's fucked up in Venezuela. Fuck socialism. Yeah. And that's about it. But I want to be the dad that can make sure my kids know like hey i know that vogue wants to have a dude in a dress and and that's cool if he wants to do that if that was his idea and if harry styles is trying to say that that's what he wants to do then good more power to him and right. more power to everybody that wants to do that but if there's a social agenda i mean a uh, some social engineering and a shadow agenda and they're just trying to like make it to where rob coming in here with all that masculinity and shit motherfucker wearing jeans and shit shoulders back with a beard what the fuck you think you doing with all that toxic masculinity anyway that was last episode you missed it money so. yeah yeah so you know what there is a toxic femininity is a, a term is? you know oh, that i didn't, you know, didn't, that. I didn't know that either, right so i looked I, it I up that one. i'm gonna have to look it up again because you, the example with chingo gave if anybody goes back and listens to episode uh four towards the end was really interesting because it, it kind of goes together with toxic masculinity right but the example that is actually if you google it or whatever if you wiki it is um tox uh, toxic femininity is men trying to keep women down and not let them come up to a man's uh status so either way it's the man's fault yeah well yeah pretty much the thing is is that um stop just blaming the, the white man for the, the same <laughs> the same way that um you know everybody interprets what they see what they hear what they watch the way they want to watch the way they want to interpret it. Mm -hmm. um, it's the same way they interpret the Bible. So the reason, you know what I'm saying? Everybody always uh, misinterprets that whole submit to your husband. Um, everybody always, you know, he took the, the rib from who? Right. To make her equal to him. That's the definition. That's what it's about. Of course, there's men out there who want to make women feel like shit and talk shit. But if we really 
follow what it says it's you're supposed to be equal with your husband your, or your or your partner well whoever it is uh whatever y'all call each other uh you're supposed to be equal to him so no one's better than the other because guess what a stay-at-home wife that fucking job is hard as fuck hell yeah that job is hard as fuck man that's all you got to say. That's all I got to say. I hope, y'all don't, I hope I, y'all don't have kids in the car. You know, so just lit it I up. know. I'm sorry. And, uh, harder, you know, that job harder than a motherfucker. I mean, that job is hard. And I can't stand when someone's like, you know, when someone says I work, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, like women that trying to like be badasses about that. And, and I'm sure the stay at home moms are like, gosh, I wish I was doing that. No, boo boo. You have a badass job. Shit. Can't nobody do that job. Ain't nobody like you. There'll never be anybody like you. No one can come in. Um, you can't be absent when you call in at work, yeah, right? And, you right. know, you're not coming in. Hey, uh, so they'll call somebody in to come in for you, right? You're irreplaceable, boo-boo. That's a hard-ass job. Boo-boo. That's all I got to say. So when a man tries to sit there and kind of tell what I can't stand when it's like she's a stay-at-home mom, you know, mom or whatever. And then um, that whole thing where asking for money, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like. Who, who asking for money? I ain't asking for shit. Did, no, do you see what my job is here? You see what my job is at home? Yeah, I ain't asking for shit. That's all I got to say. And and the women who stay at home need to take that advice. Your man got to say something. Say, no, 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 boo-boo. I'm not asking if I can have $20. I'm, I'm going to go do what I want to go do. Because guess what? My job here is 24-7. I don't get to come home from work and put up my feet on the table. Because guess what? There's still one child who needs food. Another child's probably fighting over there. Another child's over there. Mom, can you help me with homework, Mom? Dad is sitting right there on the couch. Tell us how you really feel, Marisol. <laughs> Ooh, that's, that's why sometimes feminism needs to be really like... You got you to gotta really like define that let's talk about that it's a it's a, an encouragement for women wherever you are whatever career you choose mm. empower that but don't like think you're better than another woman just because she's you know what i'm saying she's yeah. maybe so, you know it, if she chose to make that her career to stay at home with her kids that's amazing that no one else has to raise you know yeah. what i'm saying you you that's a that's that's i've always told you this pete i've said that any mom who gets to stay home and the dad works you are rich that to me is considered rich because you get to enjoy every second of your child granted they can be yeah let's not you know play what I'm saying? It's tough. like let's That's just be we real say, we leave it with it yeah tough. exactly Let me, let's be real these kids sometimes you just want to kind of put them in the closet and just be like just shut up for a second you know what i'm saying okay. and i just need to think okay real quick so you got to cut some slack to some of the ladies who find it fashionable to, to wear shirts that are like, you know, female power. Uh, obviously, right? You have a brand. Damn, Joe. Joe's Don't you see me trying to it, podcast? Man. I know. <laughs> Just Shout out to Joe, man. We, Joe we're is working killing hard. it. Thank you, Joe. <clears throat> so let me say this. I, I want to talk about the branding of some of these ideologies. Mm -hmm. For example, you might be able to go to Target or something and buy like a little shirt for your girl, your daughter. It says like something female power. It's very innocent. And it's, it's powerful, right? Yeah. And that's fine. Mm -hmm. That's good because... Marisol has her apparel, and it's about, you know, women empowerment. That's great. I have nothing but daughters. I'm the only male in the house, you know, unless, you know, the Lord blessed me with a son or something. You know what I'm talking about? You know, nine months. <laughs> Marisol looked up real nine quick. Nine months exactly after this morning. You know what I'm talking about? No, she's like, what's up? <laughs> she's like, hey, hey, hey. hey, hey. Um, so I'll give you an example. I think I've owned in the past a Shea Guevara shirt or something because I was young, stupid, sure. it looked fashionable. It's the little guy with the hat. I don't know who the fuck he is. I don't know what he's about. Later I found out, oh, he fucked over Cubans in Cuba mm -hmm. and that shit is offensive. You know, I saw Jay-Z wearing it on Unplugged MTV. I didn't know no better. So the point I'm trying to bring up for discussion is like, have y'all noticed, Mighty Soul, have y'all noticed? She over there. On her TikTok game, she like let me <laughs> let me throw off your podcast. Listen, real quick. I can't wait to show you that one where I fall and come back up. It was so hard to do. You should ask Joe. We're cracking Rob's up. Rob's gonna so remember where I was. Sorry. Okay. Go ahead, baby. Finish. Uh huh. That's Go ahead, it. Boo -boo. You ready? Mm -hmm. You good? Okay. Sorry, y'all. You know, sometimes, man. You know, only <laughs> Mighty man. so keeps us on track, though. You yeah. <laughs> Mighty so keeps us. Mighty so keeps us on track. I was just remember that in the comments. According to people that DM her. Anyway, have y'all noticed? Yeah, listen, mad. listen, listen. Because we're not trying to waste people's time. They're at home. They're subscribed and shit. 
have y'all noticed the branding of stuff that's like oh, it sounds cool like for example how many masks and things are like i can't breathe and you know like george floyd or mm-hmm. you know nothing against him I, it was a tragedy but don't don't like I was wearing the Che Guevara shirt without knowing shit about it. Right. And I didn't know I was wearing something that Cubans found offensive. Like, bro, that's fucking communism. People, people starved and shit. People got thrown in jail. They took all their riches. And this, these assholes have been in power forever. And, and you're wearing, you're promoting the fucking shirt. You don't know nothing about it. Chingo. Right. So maybe keep that in mind, right? That you might be rocking some shit that you don't really know the full thing about. No. That's a really good point. People, I mean, we got the ability to just look shit up, right? Why would you wear something where you didn't, unless you're really young and naive and dumb, right? Yeah, that was wear me. something that you just, and that's what most people are. It's fashion. They'll wear it like, oh, it looks fashionable. I saw somebody wear it on a show, like you said, exactly. And that's exactly how trends happen, right? But you can just Google it, you know? I mean, even my They Can't Deport Us All shirts, like, obviously I was very militant, you know, and, you know, I'm not, I'm not pro kids in cages, you know, even though yeah. motherfuckers try to put words in my mouth, you know, misinterpret. But, um, you know, at the time with those shirts, I kind of understood why people would get in trouble for wearing them. Like, like if one of my homies had it on in the plane, like we're getting on a plane, like we'd get stared at so much that the stewardess or flight attendant would tell them like, hey, can you turn your shirt inside out type of shit? Or like kids would send us messages or they'd be, I think they were on the news in Florida like they did a news report where basically kids got suspended for wearing those shirts um it was like a big God big damn. deal and then when we made the billboard obviously it probably was an eyesore for a lot of people that they were like ah this motherfucker you know and then you know the the taco truck thing that shit made it on wikipedia where they kept vandalizing it and it eventually got stolen and that's old news that's like a fucking blip but it was on my wikipedia so people would always fucking bring it up yeah but it's like nothing compared to like my own people, like Theo Tom, Malinche, Coconut, Sellout, Bendigo, and so on. But uh, you know, I it's got thick skin. I'm frustrating as fuck. I'm used to it. Again, going back to what I said at the beginning is, uh, you know, be happy with some of the freedoms that we had. As a matter of fact, I had some here that I wanted to pull up to maybe just see if you guys were even aware that some of these things exist around the world, right? As soon as I can find it. Manisola, when is your apparel drop? Oh, Black my uh, luxury remix uh, collection drops Black Friday. Where can everybody get we it? We have um, herapparel.tx.com. Already, you know Versace Mariachi this Friday. Sass Black Friday. Look, look, look how beautiful this artwork is, y'all. Shout out to David Melgar who also designed this. Yep. I shouted him out yesterday on the, on yeah. the episode. I was rocking uh, that jacket over there, mm-hmm. the Joy Rich. Mm-hmm. That's one of his. Yeah, and I was telling everybody not only did he design that clothing line. But um, he's in charge, making shit, making sure our shit is fly. So real quick, a couple of things that are illegal that could get you a fine or even put in jail. Uh, for instance, and this article is from two years ago, so some of these might have changed, but I highly doubt it. Uh, y'all like yoga, right? Mm-hmm. You're fans of yoga. Getting yourself in the facing in the uh, down dog pose in Russia could put you in hot water. Mm, you can get in trouble. You can get in trouble just by getting in downward dog. They thinking you busting a wide open. There you go. They don't want Putin doesn't like that, right? Uh, ignoring your parents' text in some countries, it's actually like especially in China, you have to go to your parents a certain amount of times per week. Once you get over the age of sixty, you have to visit them. You have to do certain things for them, or again, you'll get fined or maybe even prosecuted in really? another way. Yeah, that's well, kind of prosecuted, but I think that's a good one. That's kind of good. That's a good one. You know what, China? I'm not. Uh, I'm, I'm not, not mad totally at that against one. you. But Should then, be on top of our parents. Parents that are unhappy with their children's attention can sue them for neglect. Oh. Well, that's not bad either, too. <laughs> man, Shit. let me call my mom after this, man. Yeah, right. Uh, chewing gum. Uh, chewing gum. If you, it was actually legal in Singapore until '92. And if you spit it on the ground or put it on any kind of public property, you'd get a huge fine. Uh, selfies, uh, selfies aren't aren't legal everywhere. Uh, you can't just, especially in this one was in Thailand. You can't take any underboob type photos or any kind of cleavage type photos because it goes against some of their uh, like internet. Yeah, it's uh, computer crimes. You know. There's a lot of countries that would just cut off the internet on yeah. their citizens. Uh, India, I know, has done it, I think, like, the most. But that's that's trippy if you think about it. Dude, the last one here, Philippines, uh, divorce is illegal. So if you hate who you fucking married, you can't divorce them. What? If I'm not mistaken, um, in Argentina, too, I believe, like, you get an incentive um, at work. Your bonus is higher if you're married. No shit. So if, you, if you're married and, you know, you're a family man, you get an incentive. Like, you're a... 
you know, uh, your bonus at work is based on if you're a family man. Like, if so, you make more money when you're married because I don't know, military does that, don't they? Hmm. They give you a little bit more money when you're married. Makes sense. You get some incentives, right? Tax incentives. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, not to interrupt your list. No, that was it. She mentioned Argentina, and I'm thinking to myself, is it true that uh, that Dominion software was used was used in the Venezuelan election? I believe so. Yeah. That's what they said. So that's for real. That's originally why it was made to help Chavez. And y'all know it was created to help him win. Our intelligence uh, agencies, like CIA and all that, it's their job to go over there and meddle <laughs> in other countries' elections. It's their job to see if they can get some influence right. in the in the press and the media and propaganda and universities and prof- whatever in other countries. That's their job. You know what I mean? They working for us. They supposed to be over there, you know, doing what the fuck they do. So I've heard that, you know, when they were saying. Um, this Dominion software, has anybody gone in there to look at the code? Mm-hmm. You look at all the features and glitches and functions. I heard that if you were, like, somebody at the CIA, like, it's their job. Like, if you weren't fucking with the software, seeing how it works and how it could be used improperly, then you weren't doing what the fuck you were supposed to be doing. Like, your intelligence. It, speaking of intelligence, and it has been, some sites say that it's been debunked or it's not true, but the, uh, the servers that the U.S. intelligence seized from Germany. Was that true? I mean, some places say that it's still ongoing. Others say that it's not true. So, again, even with fact checkers, it really depends who the fact checker is. Mm-hmm. But that's oh, fucking that's trippy. Che- mm-hmm. Oh, man, especially fact checkers on Twitter. The main dude, hold on, the main dude that's in charge of fact checking for Twitter is like, uh, it's in his bio. He was like a, what, who, somebody's campaign. Like, he's pretty much Democrat. Oh, okay. So he's like partisan. That's he's, what I'm talking about. He's biased. He's partisan. He still has it in his bio, like chief campaign strategist for whoever the fuck, right? Like oh. somebody big. I think Hillary or something. Yeah. And he's the fact checker who works at Twitter. He used to work for CNN, if I'm not mistaken. And it's his job to be like, mm, I don't like how you said that, Mr. President. Uh, false. Uh, Same thing for Facebook. And that's the reason why Candace Owens is suing him. And oh, that's right. She's that's doing right. Uh, what is it? Something suck, and you can like. Oh, uh, Mark uh, Zucks, Zucks, sucks, or something like that. Something like that, where you can donate to her campaign because it's gonna. She said it's gonna be a lot of court fees, but it's t- so that they don't have control with this fact checking shit because the fact checking shit is it's actually getting out of hand. it's getting out of hand. But it's their own people that they're hiring to do the fact checking so that. You know, so they fact it, check it. And, and even on and even on Instagram, I don't know if you notice that, Rob, whenever I've DM'd you some, some kind of video or vice versa, I, I don't know if it gives you um, that option on there where it says uh, not every, basically like news media isn't, like they give you this warning about. Yeah, about if you want to share it anyway. Yeah, it wouldn't share it anyway. Yeah. They put, they add friction to make it a little bit harder for the conservative voices or, I mean, arguably to some people on the left, all that shit's QAnon. All that shit's conspiracy. All that shit is fucking YouTube University, right? Like, you just went down some rabbit hole, Chingo, and you're fucking retarded. <laughs> like, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. But, um, you know, how Orwellian is that? Like, it's like the books, like 1984 and all Great that. Great turn of good, good it, choice of words. It's Orwellian as fuck, you know, because I'm still from the hood. I'm talking about, <laughs> even though I went to prep school, don't get it twisted. Uh, is Orwellian as fuck to, to lead society down the path of, how did we arrive at the point that believe the science is like, yeah. yeah, but half the science gets debunked two weeks later. These um, these studies that they do, they start to look at like when they're testing a medicine, like, oh, that medicine, uh, hydroxychloroquine, that's bad. And then you look at the studies, they're like, see, Chingo, the study said, that, you know, it's, it's bad and Trump shouldn't be promoting it. And then like a week later, all the science community is like, bro, they were testing. They didn't even include this or they were giving it to people that were already dying or look at the dosage they gave them, bro. This study is bullshit. But we, we live in a world where they're like, believe the science. We trust the science. You know, good old Joe believes science. Trump does not. And we have fact checkers now because Trump's a liar. Well, yeah. even even masks, for instance, uh, I don't know if it was the CDC or the, uh, the World Health Organization said themselves that masks themselves do absolutely nothing unless washed in a hospitalized commercial washer dryer. Mm. Does nothing otherwise. Yeah, because if anything, some would argue that really touching your face is the bad thing. Yeah. And if you have a mask, you're constantly doing yeah, you're this not supposed shit. To, yeah, there's, you're only supposed to touch it on a certain way. You're only supposed to put it on a certain way. And you have to wash it in a hospital washer dryer. 
Otherwise, it doesn't do anything. But why are we just gonna ignore it? Ah, eh, whatever. You know, it's it's their mandates now. You got to do what the fucking local governor says or whoever. There, there's this uh, dude on. Um, how do I check my inbox here? Though, this dude on uh, fucking TikTok, young dude, funny. How, how do I check my inbox? Hold on. I don't. I don't even know how to work TikTok. Boo, you uh, help me with that. <laughs> a ver, a ver, a ver. Aquí está. Espérate. Okay, check him out. This little dude's name is David. Dot La, how do you say that? Lamas? L L A M A S. Listen. Uh, and and Hold on. Bring, bring their national guard. Look. Governors, governors need to be able to get funding when they dis, when they dis, they need to uh, and, and bring, bring their national guard into play. So you're gonna blame this on a stuttering problem again? That that wasn't stuttering. What I just did there was stuttering. Having an aneurysm or a stroke for 10 seconds isn't. <laughs> a stutter as a kid is one thing, but when you're Joe Biden and have been in politics for the past freaking since Abraham Lincoln, you would think that that stutter would get progressively better. Notice how this has really only became an issue in recent years. That's called cognitive decline, not a stutter. Governors. So a little young kid, man, be dropping knowledge, and I, I send him to my 12-year-old because I know she's on TikTok, and I know she gets bombarded with, like, but dad, you know, everyone at school, well, not now. She in that private school now. Different story there. <laughs> so now she's like, nah, these people up on their shit. Dad's making more sense now all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah, all of a sudden. I was trying to find the fact checker, but yeah, I, I do remember what you said. There was somebody from, uh, I think it was Hillary's campaign that is the fact checker, you know, type person on Twitter. I just can't remember what his name was. But again, if that's not biased, what the fuck is? I mean, hey, people think I'm queuing on and, and this fact checker thing some people trust it just like they trust the media and they think it's a it's an okay thing it's there's no slippery slope like you know but it seems a little biased like bro you ain't fact checking these people at all and if you tend to if you lean conservative or right they fact checking the shit out of you you can't share the hunter biden story new york post gets their their account suspended white house McKay, what's her name kaylee mcenany mm -hmm. smart Ooh, as a motherfucker yeah. she's smart than a motherfucker and they kicking her off twitter and shit it's like god damn what are y'all doing over there so that's why i'm on parlor make sure y'all follow me on that parlor chingo bling one mm. yeah there's another app uh, i didn't want to shout it out until i downloaded it but because we're talking about where you get your um your news it's kind of your noticias yeah it's called uh, it's an app called and we can all maybe download it and check it out it's called both sides where what they do is they actually give you all of the the articles you know for the day in the news from both sides so you can compare and contrast wow. how each uh, outlet is at reporting on it. So it's wow. an app. Check it out. It's an That's app. Dope. It's called Both Sides. So it's got right left and it tells you what like you know CNN versus Forbes or you know CBS versus whatever and how they are writing about it. So it's a really cool idea. I'm, I'm just about to download Damn. it because I forgot yesterday. But that's like, okay, if you needed a super easy way to distinguish two articles, and, you, and this actually does a good job of it, if it does, you, it's undeniable, right? It's irrefutable. If somebody's writing the complete opposite of the others, like, well, now you got to do a little more research, right? Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of people took the bait. I have been named in articles next to uh, uh, Jorge Masvidal and Little Pump and Tito Ortiz and people like that. So motherfuckers took the bait. Thank you. Tito Ortiz. Uh, I'm out this Friday. I appreciate all the promo and the PR. You know what's funny is I stopped following Tito Ortiz because he would post so much Trump shit. Well, yeah. he's over the top. And I was like, ugh, I can't follow him anymore. It's like, if you stop, you know what I'm saying? It, and it was Yahweh, before. It, it, was before <laughs> it, it was before I, you know, educated myself and read and, you know, um, and you know what, guys? I'm not saying that those of you guys, because uh, those were some of my DMs when... Y'all need to stop saying that Educate. um, educated because there's a lot of us who are educated out here. And so that's offensive. OK, well, I educated myself because I was not educated prior to this. Yeah. Um, so good for you if you educated yourself. Is informed a better I mean, word yeah, to use? Like well, what, whatever yeah, fucking I, adjective you want to use. I uh, encourage you to inform yourself. But yeah, well, during that time, I like couldn't stand Trump, you know, because I, too, you know, fell into that. Yeah, you just, know, just little I, I, everything yeah. like how dare you, you Sound know, bites. insulted and and so forth. And uh, like I said, it was like, damn, Tito Ortiz was saying already saying this shit. Fuck this guy, man. I can't believe he was right. <laughs> Fuck this well, guy. the people that were like, hey, uh, why you keep saying educate yourself, educate yourself. If we if a lot of us are educated, I think the way they take the word, edu I'm assuming some of them might take educated, educate yourself. I'm educated as I went to college and I'm in debt. And I, I, I got indoctrinated. Yeah. So I went to college, too. 
it doesn't you know what I mean the sociology lady was trying to get me into their department on some Marxism shit so I could be one of the fucking orale he him they <laughs> motherfuckers um so I, I think maybe that's what they meant which is like I went to college yeah, yeah but that's not what she meant what she meant is don't believe everything CNN tells you mm-hmm. just because Don Lemon and, and Cuomo and Jorge Ramos are good actors at performing lines and Anderson Cooper but he said drink bleach motherfucker he didn't stupid like uh, what's his name and even during that time babe do you remember when you told me that you were explaining that to me I was like the bleach thing I was still not on the Trump train I was still not so during that time do you know how I kind of was trying to justify it I was like you know this is what I told myself and I told you this I said if this guy would just find better words to say Okay, you know how if you drank a bottle of ble- like explain that shit like don't just say drink bleach right? He didn't say. So drink he, I know he didn't, <laughs> but I'm just saying. When I heard that, I thought to myself, right? I was like, if he would just explain it, like hypothetically, if you drank a bottle of bleach, right? I'm saying like if you explained it versus just they're gonna take that. And then it, that wasn't even what he said. And then I was like, ah. Well, oh. well, look, this is where he fucked up. They had a bad strategy at the time. They were in the middle of a, of a COVID crisis. They thought that it would be best if the commander in chief went in front of the cameras, talked to the American people, and he's he's very positive. He likes to spin shit in a hyperbolic, you know what I mean? Like sure. we're gonna come back, we're gonna come back stronger than ever, so that people get their hopes up and they can invest in the stock market and everybody don't pull their money out and don't start panicking in the streets and shit. Ah, we're all gonna <laughs> die. I need toilet paper. He didn't want that. That's why he was. So here's what he fucked up. He was trying to talk about some medical shit, and he ain't a doctor. He was trying to talk about some scientific shit that they briefed him on, but he ain't a scientist. So I think they made the adjustment where they're like, okay, here's where he's really fucking up. He keeps going up there trying to talk the scientific verbiage. We need to save that for Fauci, Burks, and maybe somebody else, Pence, anybody. Yeah. McEnany, somebody, anybody but him. And I think they made the adjustment, but it was too late. Because you have Chicano political um, comic writers, you have the mainstream media, you have um, blue check mark people on Twitter, you got just everybody and their mom. You got John Leguizamo, Eva Longoria, Ever James. You got all these people on one side. And it was just basically like we got this fucking reality TV show guy, and we're just going to pick apart every fucking stupid little thing and, and forget about the the Middle East peace treaties and energy independence and, you know, why we probably should have strong borders. Well, I want to educate myself so much to where I'm like Kaylee McEnany. I love it. To where if you're going to say something to me, I'm just going to flip my book (laughs) like this and be like, okay, so on December 4th, 19, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'll be watching her and be like, damn. I dig that. I I really, I think that's really cool. That bitch is just like, you You want her and and your study group. Yeah, no shit, right? I mean, she is on it. I'm very impressed with her. You know what? Even the other lady that, um... Oh, Amy Coney Barrett? No, 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 no. She's she's fired too. But uh, they hated on both of them. I know, the one the press secretary that he had before Kaylee uh, McEnany. Huckabee. Huckabee. Mm. Sarah Huckabee. It's because ella yeah, es que like la her cara. la cara es que tenía tenía la, la sangre cara. pesada. You know, como Shrek, you know? Yeah, caía tenía mal. la sangre pesada y te caía, caía mal. mal no, you know. No, and so, pobrecita la Sara, yeesh. esa sí. You know, but she was smart as fuck too. No, she knew sí, pero up, la cara. And you know what I'm saying? No le ayudaba. You know, no, no. She didn't have the poise, and I hate to say that, but. Because I feel like she had like RBF, but like a funky RBF. Bitch yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, yeah, I guess that's what it is. So okay, yeah, mal already with Kaylee McEnany. I feel like she comes out. She's smiling. She's saying what's up. She, I, I, she's like that's like like me. Like whenever someone trusted like thinks they're gonna fucking like just tell me off and they're not. They're gonna get more mad. It's like she comes in and she's ready. It's just like. Well, yeah, book, yeah, because it down and it's just like mm. she says, I don't take questions from activists yeah. because <laughs> and, and we should probably wrap up because uh, we got yeah, go a babysitter over okay, there. Okay. We got to hang with the baby. But um, maybe we the next episode, maybe not. Right. But it'd be dope to do some shit like in Spanish, like a motherfucker. Mm. Just so that we might be reaching a whole new audience. That's like, ah, cabrón, ese no me la sabía por el WhatsApp. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, ma- mandame el video para pa repartirlo. Yeah. And speaking about educating yourself to that degree, Soul, I, I, I mean, I think that's cool when anybody does it, you know, if you're really into it and just want to want to learn more, like, why wouldn't you want to learn yeah, more about I your do. country, Yeah, I do. That's right? exactly why. So, and 
earlier when I said, you know, the one of the origins of Thanksgiving was to try to prevent a civil war almost, right? By giving, getting everybody in the 13 colonies to gather, to say thanks, and all that kind of communal shit that we can't do because they're saying right now, don't do it. Because the governors. Right. Um, it's going back and then kind of just understanding every time that Chingo and I brought up cancel culture, you know, free speech, Second Amendment, all that stuff. Learn maybe the Constitution and the Bill of Rights and the differences in the two and then the Articles of Confederation before the Constitution and all of those three documents within themselves. And then just start there. You know, you could go back to Columbus and you go back Bro. to all that. Sure. But but then you have that. There's a book of that I saw it on Amazon because I, li- I told Chingo, I was like, I want to legit... I'm not I'm not trying to be like into politics because I'm not. It's not my thing. I don't yeah. really care for it. But I do want to be able to speak on it. And you know what I'm saying? And if I can be some sort of, you know, I think it gives you appreciation. You just like if I just can if I can inform you because my purpose of social media is to inform you, yeah. encourage, Bring empower, you make you feel like, oh, I like following her. Yeah, I just told you that. Don't say educate. <laughs> going to jump That's why I said inform. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, you know, the only reason I, I, I want to, if I'm going to post something that's political, it's because I want to be able to back it up 100%, sure. not just of because course. someone else reposted and I'm going to repost that. So, you know what I'm saying? So a lot of it is the, that's the reason why. And, um, I'd love to know the statistics of how many Latinos abort babies right. the way, you know what I'm saying? I'd like to see how many Latinos are on, you know, food stamps. How much and brown on brown crime? Yeah. I don't know. How much brown on brown how crime there is? How bad is diabetes? Yes. Uh, if I forget, I don't, I don't want to jump in and interrupt. You made a point about learning the Bill of Rights versus the Constitution, so on and so forth. What if we came up with a funny video idea where it might be like Tio Juve or, or one of my characters or we make a new character maybe like Taco Carlson? <laughs> yes. And, and basically in a very funny uh, with visual way, like using green screen, like, ¿Qué onda, cabrones? Hoy vamos a hablar del Bill of Rights. No, el Bill of Rights, no, no, no. Vamos a hablar, you know, hit the, something funny and ratchet to yeah. where it's like, ding, ding. You know, este, este pedo lo sacaron porque en 1776 se trataba de whatever, whatever. Este pedo quiere decir que no puedes andar con tu hermana ni la prima, güey. You know what I mean? Whatever that's, the rule is. Funny. Se trata de los derechos del, del press. Yeah. Like, back in the day, we won a Web Award. It was called a Webby. It was about habeas corpus. We did one about Abraham Lincoln, me and that director Franco mm. uh, from, uh, I think he's originally from Miami. But um, we won a Webby, and it was like funny, visual, and uh, I, I don't know if people learned anything, but it was like. That's dope, though. Abraham Good Lincoln. Idea. Yeah, it was like Abraham Lincoln grew up dirt poor, uh, dirt poor. His father uh, was, a, uh, was a sharecropper. Yeah. And this, this, and that. And, it, and it's visual, and I'm like. You know, the Civil War started because he called Godzilla a puto face or something. It was, <laughs> so there was like dumb shit in there, too. But we should definitely think if we can find a way to in a bite size, entertaining, funny way, have somebody be like, yo, I saw that video about the fucking Constitution. Oh, we were rolling. And I learned something. Too. That's a great idea. Might have to hit up Javi Luna for that one. Like, hey, Javi, this is what we want to do, man. How can we do it? <laughs> yeah, I right. also, um, another thing, uh, f- my friend Marissa, she and I be having some good convos. Me and her kids, sh- long out. convos, man. We be really, because she's shout one out of, Juice Caboose. Yeah, shout out Juice Caboose. Like, man, she's, uh, that's my girl. Um, funny thing is, it's amazing. Like, you meet people, and uh, she's a new friend, which I don't allow new friends. As in you my get circle. older, you almost yeah, don't want I don't friends. really do new friends, especially at 39. You know what I'm saying? So, like, um, I really like uh, she and I just kind of really, really click and we understand. Uh, I also um, Amanda and Connie, who are also uh, are also new friends. And uh, it's weird because at 39, like I said, you know, they're just kind of like, you know, I've. I, f- I didn't feel weird. Mm-hmm. I don't know if, I, if that makes sense. I think women kind of would probably get that. But anyway, we were talking about, um, you know, how uh, since like the, um, you know, since the slavery days, um, they were trying to teach African-American families to yank the father away from the family, mm-hmm. um, which this this method was made by uh, the making of a slave by Willie Lynch. Have you read the Willie Li- uh-huh. the Willie Lynch letter? Well, neither have I. She sent me the. Um, Is it a book? It's a it's the Willie Lynch letter. It's okay. a letter. So um, maybe the next time we'll discuss it, we'll all read it sure. and so forth, um, because it's interesting because it, she was saying how since the slavery days, this guy, this is why it's called lynching, lynching was named yeah. after him, obviously. 
Um, and so um, he basically, you know, they would put a, a, a black family, right? Had a baby. They would pull the father to separate the family so there'd be no connection. Now they place him over here. Now you're going to impregnate this black woman over here. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to pull you from there so there'd be no connection. Aww. So that they grew up with their mentality of, you know what I'm saying? We got to survive without a man in our household because we all know that the man, at least the majority of the time, is the you know protector of us it's the protector of our family you know he's the one that if if you know he's provider he, he's a provider etc you know what i'm saying and so you know now it's like black women ha have to be the provider for these children have got to be Man. strong for these children these the the this thing is so crazy i couldn't even Man. believe when she told Let me, me read about a it piece. can i read a piece sure so this dude and just give you a little bit of context he gave this speech uh, in 1712 uh, off of the James River in the colony of Virginia. He was a British slave owner in the West Indies, like the Caribbean. He was invited to the colony of Virginia in 1712 to teach his methods to the slave owners there. I'm gonna jump ahead. He says in the middle of it, I caught the whiff of a dead slave hanging from a tree a couple miles back. You're not only losing valuable stock by hangings, you're having uprisings. Slaves are running away. Your crops are sometimes left in the fields too long for maximum profit. You suffer occasional fires. Your animals are killed. Gentlemen, you know what your problems are? I do not need to elaborate. I'm not here to enumerate your problems. I'm here to introduce you to a method of solving them in my bag here. I have a foolproof method for controlling your black slaves. I guarantee every one of you that if installed correctly, it will control the slaves for at least 300 years. Ugh. My method is simple. Any member of your family or your overseer can use it. You know, the overseers were the people that would, uh, right. you know, uh, Karis one had a song called that um, I have outlined a number of differences among the slaves and I take these differences and make them bigger I use fear distrust and envy for control purposes these methods have worked on my modest plantation in the West Indies and they will work throughout the south take the simple little list of differences and think about them on top of my list is age but it's there only because it starts with an a the second is color or shade there is intelligence size sex sizes of plantations, status on plantations, attitude of owners, whether the slaves live in the valley, on a hill, east, west, north, south, have fine hair, coarse hair, tall or short. Now that you have a list of differences, I shall give you an outline of action. But before that, I shall assure you that distrust is stronger than trust and envy stronger than adulation, respect or admiration. The black slaves after receiving this indoctrination shall carry on and will become self refueling and self-generating for hundreds of years, maybe thousands. Don't forget, you must pitch the old black male versus the young black male and the young black male against the old black male. You must use the dark-skinned slaves versus the light-skinned slaves mm. and the light-skinned slaves versus the dark-skinned slaves. You must use the female versus the male and the male versus the female. My friends is smart. You must also have white servants and overseers who distrust all blacks. But it is necessary that your slaves trust and depend on us. They must love, respect, and trust only us. Sounds like Biden. Gentlemen, <laughs> these kits are your keys to control. Use them. Have your wives and children use them. Never miss an opportunity. If used intensely for one year, the slaves themselves will remain perpetua perpetually distrustful. Thank you, gentlemen. Let's make a slave. And he goes on and on and on and on and on and on. Cardinal. So, guys, if you haven't yet, um, you should go to... Division. Uh, finalcall.com and that's where this article is from and it's called the Willie Lynch letter, letter the making the of making a of a slave so if you have time to read it guys and like again I can't emphasize enough um, I think that what you uh, Rob and what uh, Chingo have started to do I you hope you call me Pete um, have uh, okay, you know, babe. some people don't like that yeah Pinche I thought you were Pedrito homie um, have really I hope this has helped if it oh, hasn't, the final call. That's the Muslim newspaper. Yeah. The uh, Nation of Islam. Okay, go ahead. Um, and so I get it. Like, if you don't want, uh, if you, you're you you're considering this, like, fuck y'all, you don't, you know, y'all don't know shit. That's cool. And too, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I'm over, I'm over I mean, those comments. It's America. a thing. You uh, yeah, can say that if yeah, you want. Yeah, it's, I, mean, I don't really care. It is a thing. Willie Lynch letter. She didn't just make it up. <laughs> yeah. It's been around. So I just want for like anything that is talked about, um, I hope that everybody goes back and does their own thing to inform themselves and use duck, um, duck, go and then com, not you know and then just kind of try to like read books um and and just kind of like uh take the time yourself to yeah. 
really like go i'm not gonna say go down this rabbit hole like we did or i did i'm, I'm gonna speak for myself yeah, but some people think that's yeah, QAnon. yeah so i'm gonna say for myself you know but i'm glad that i did um and i'm glad that i know more now and that i want to keep informing myself that's dope I, i'll leave it with this but you know again it's thanksgiving right thanksgiving or black friday when you listen to this get the album Versace, I will. um it's cool that or, or let me just put this to you guys isn't it crazy i should say that in a time like that we're talking you know before slavery was abolished uh, early 1700s to you know when abraham lincoln said no more of this shit right and all that in between people could come up with these crazy sinister type of evil plans for the bad and the really good ones where you get articles of, uh, you know aoc and the declaration and all the bill of rights and then now in 2020 people will think that you can't come up with these type of sinister ideas and plans and propaganda or people don't cheat yeah or people votes. don't cheat or there's not bias that that maybe the left is trying to do some of the things that the right is saying as, as far as keeping you separated maybe and changing your mind about the perception of skin and inequality and it's really bizarre that people think that's not a thing right now. And, and, and instead, let's think about how we can work together. <laughs> so yeah, because we're trying, right? We're trying to end it, right? We got to go inside. Yeah. Um, what was the last thing you just said? Because I forgot. People don't think that right now you could have the the separation that people are trying to keep you, like inequality and, and the what's going on, like the division. So another reminder is this: a lot of times we've been trained to think about skin only and to think that. I have a lot more in common with the folks in this room because we look alike and we come from Latin descent or whatever, um, that you would think that we may have less in common with an Asian Christian or a white entrepreneur or a black hip hop fan. Or it's like we have shit in common with all kinds of people and don't always get boxed into this. Who's a vendido? Who's a coconut? Who's a sellout? Mm -hmm. Instead, think about shit maybe you need some republican friends you yeah. know what i mean maybe you don't want to have all the same kind of friend <laughs> um and so anyways like i like what dr ed young said when he says you know i come from scottish uh, descent this that, and the third he says that doesn't tell you anything about me he says i might have more in common with uh, somebody from a remote village in the amazon who believes you know in jesus christ than my neighbor who who doesn't and they might look just like me so there's other ways to identify and yep. it's, it doesn't always have to be race and skin because as willie lynch was talking about it could be a very divisive tool mm -hmm. i yeah. love it great episode yeah. guys for sure enjoy thanksgiving hope you had a great one don't forget to shop her apparel tx.com and get the new cd versace mariachi along go. with new merch thank you guys stay safe and like we said we just want to keep it positive if you enjoy it leave us a comment Give it a rating, a thumbs up. Give us some feedback. We appreciate you. And we have a handful, handful more episodes left. Red Pill Tamales. Sass.